Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. It's good to see so many of you. Good to welcome you from home. Good to welcome some new friends who are joining us for the first time this evening. Uh, we hope that you will sing with us, that you'll pray with us, that you'll move with us. Our prayer book, Mishkan Tefillah, is one of the two blue bound books in front of you, opening from right to left as we read in Hebrew. You can typically find your point of entree in one of the four quadrants of any set of opening pages in the Hebrew, in the English, or in the, liter the, the more literary version of, uh, of, of the passage that we are considering. So, so pray with us. Greet one another as we welcome the Sabbath as well. We hope you'll take just a minute before we turn to the kindling of the Shabbat lights and turn, make eye contact with someone who you haven't yet connected with, same at home. Wish them a Shabbat Shalom. Give a wave or a smile. And we will begin on pages 120, 121. As we turn to the kindling of the Shabbat lights, let's, uh, let's share this passage together on page 121. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter the sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead us to acts of kindness, peace, peace and, and love. <clears throat> and join me the blessing. Baruch Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Page 123, as we continue with Kiddush, the sanctification of this day, and we'll invite you please in body or in spirit <coughs> to rise. <laughs> Kindly be seated as we continue on page 124. May the door of the synagogue be wide enough to receive all who hunger for love, all who are lonely for friendship. May it welcome all who have cares to unburden, thanks to express, hopes to nurture. May the door of the synagogue be narrow enough to shut out pettiness and pride, envy and enmity. May its threshold be no stumbling block to young or straying feet. May it be too high to admit complacency, selfishness, and harshness. May this synagogue be for all who enter, the doorway to a richer and more meaningful life. We offer thanks, O oh God, for this Shabbat which unites us in faith and hope, for Shabbat holiness which inspires sacred living, for Shabbat memories glowing even in darkness, for Shabbat peace, born of friendship and love, we offer thanks and blessing, O God. 
page 134 as we continue with the singing of Zamru La Adonai. <clears throat> continue to greet the Sabbath now as we turn to the words of Lecha Dodi, the words that our mystics offered us as if we had an opportunity to welcome the Sabbath bride is the imagery that we are given as she comes through a field in white. We welcome the Sabbath bride, page 138. We sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9, and at verse 9 we rise in some way in our body, in our spirit, in our neshama, in our heart, and we bring her towards us. Page 138. <laughs> Let's see, Ferret, 
up the spirit and clap in the hands. It's okay to clap the hands during the service and snap your fingers right. and move your bodies to express the joy of Shabbat. And to that end, it's also okay for you to be seated. <laughs> but don't lose your Shabbat spirit. Pages 145, page 145 is where we continue the bottom of the page and then to 144. Teach me, O oh God, a blessing, a prayer on the mystery of a withered leaf, on ripened fruit so fair on the freedom to see, to sense, to breathe, to know, to hope, to despair. Teach my lips a blessing, a hymn of praise, as each morning and night you renew your days, lest my day be today as the one before, lest routine set my ways. <laughs> We continue with our call to worship the Bar Hu on page 146, and again, we invite you please to rise. Together, praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath brought, guides the sail of the stars, creator of the tide of time and light. You guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch Ata Adonai. Hama Ariv Aravin, Avat Olam Beit Yisrael Amecha Ahavta. Wisdom and wonder, we say, passion and instruction, story and symbol. All these things your Torah gives to us, and the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of your abiding love than this holiest of your works, and the living language that gives it form? Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem, Kevor Emahuto, Leolam And kindly be seated as we continue with the Ve'ahavta. The after head Ani Adonai Lehem, a 
Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, and that there is no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together. <laughs> Let there be love and understanding among us. Words, I think, that are so important. I would even say desperately needed for us to hear and pray and say over and over again. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. I don't know, I help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch Ata Adonai, Haporei Sukkot Shalom Aleinu, Be'al Kol Amo Yisrael, Be'al Yerushalayim. We continue now on page 162 <coughs> with the singing of Yismehu.
continue now as we come to the heart of our service, to the tefillah, that where we gather all those moments from this past week, the moments for which we have been thankful for stronger health, for friendship, for family, for a sense of the divine, for those who came before us, all the different elements of our tradition, all the different elements in our own lives for which we give thanks. We make no requests on Shabbat, only offer hoda'ot, only offer our thanks. And it is at this time that we turn to the tefillah, and just before we stand in body or in spirit, we take a deep breath, one that comes from deep in our, in our gut, that moves right through us and into our words, into our prayer, as we offer our thanks on page 164. I invite you please to rise. And kindly be seated as we continue at the top of page 173. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch ata Adonai, Mikadesh HaShabbat. Ratzei Adonai Eloheinu be'amcha Yisrael, u'tefilatam be'ahava tikabel, u'tehila ratzon tamid avodat Yisrael amecha. Baruch ata Adonai she'orcha levadcha b'yira na'avod. God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth, which day by day sustains us. For all these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch ata Adonai, hatov shimcha lucha na'el lehodot. Shalom
take a few moments, each of us, we pray, we meditate in some intentional silence. We say, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, Adonai. And as we continue to pray, we turn our hearts and our prayers and our thoughts and our energies towards those who are in need of healing and wholeness and strength and kindness of care, of compassion, of support, as we turn to the words of the Mishabeirach, which can be found on page 371. And we say, Mishaberach Avotenu Imotenu Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov, Sarah Rivka Rachel Baleahu Yivarech Etacholim. May the blessed one, may the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and give strength to those who are struggling. This Shabbat we are holding in our prayers Shana Esther Bat Rochel, Laura Braun, Rini Feingold, Michael Shartok, Valerie Brownstein. Stephen Breger, Carol Breger, Linda Champion, Raymond Condone, Jen Palma, Lynn Sharfman, Yoel David, Ben Mordechai, Kim Stanger Delisle, Alan Skirker, Denny Linsner, Jeffrey Wicks, Randall Hems, Teresa Elizabeth Schwal, Joyce Levenberg, Fran Schoenfeld, Denise Schildkraut, 
Zippy Kleinberg, Audrey Patron, Seymour Weinstein, Peter Lingenfelter, Jason Gluer, Austin Torday, Lance Phillips, Joan Gage, Sue Bondi, Esther Batchaya Rochel, and Deborah McDell Hernandez. If there are names that you would add to this list or names that are better spoken aloud by you, please, as I look your way, would you share that name or those names with us? And from home? Sarah Pachifra, Phil Nenny, Brett Legault. To our prayers, let us add all of those who are struggling and suffering in the war in Israel, the war against Hamas, those who are Israeli, those who are Palestinian, those who are connected to those who are suffering, those who are being held hostage in the most impossible of ways. Let us turn all of our prayers and our hearts to them as we say, may the blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for wherever possible health and safety to be restored and strength revived, may God send renewal of body and renewal of spirit as we join together in saying, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make a grateful to have a lovely office here at Temple with a very comfortable sofa for when people come to talk to me. And yet, despite that, sometimes people look very uncomfortable. And they begin the conversation by saying, I'm sorry I don't, I'm sorry that you don't see me more often. I really should come to services more often, or I'm not involved at Temple as much as I should be, and the list goes on. And I try to lighten the mood a little bit by saying, all good, we actually don't have confession in Judaism. I'm just glad that you're here now. We do have confession at the High Holy Days and, and, and one other time, but we don't typically have confession in the same way. And I say, I'm just glad that you're here and, and try to set their minds at ease. There are a lot of jokes about Jewish guilt. You probably have a favorite. I won't share mine so you won't have to stifle a groan, but most of us have one that we like. We have a long and sometimes complicated relationship with guilt, dating all the way back to the Bible and threaded very much through to today. Many of us believe, as Rabbi Melanie Aaron suggests, that sometimes guilt is described as the Jewish mother's secret weapon. It used to be Jews and Catholics whose guilt, debating whose guilt is worse, but now sometimes she writes, it's Jews and Asians competing in the guilt-producing parent Olympics. I don't know about you, but it is certainly not the honorific I aspire to earn. But guilt wasn't, isn't limited just to Jewish mothers. Classically, it was what High Holy Day sermons were supposed to provoke. Bizarre to me that at a time when we enjoy the most well-attended set of services, 
It took many rabbis far too long to realize that reprimanding people who showed up for not showing up more often may not have been the best technique. So what is this magnetic pull that we have to either feel guilty or try to make others feel guilty? There is simply no mistaking that it is an unpleasant feeling. One that is largely, although not always, unproductive and mostly, although not always, unhealthy. So what do you think about guilt? Do you, do you believe that there is anything effective about guilt in general? Yes? No? No? We have a no? 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 Yes? Yes? I see you not answering. Yes? Yes? In the middle? Okay, in the middle? Yes? Uh, oh, 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 we have someone who studies guilt. Okay, then I'll ask your forgiveness early. Uh, fair, fair, and, and I'll, I'll, ask, I'll, I'll ask and probably ask again at the end. So it's interesting how far back our struggle with, our struggle with feeling guilty can actually be, be traced. Rabbi Yael Spolansky, my, my colleague at Holy Blossom in Toronto, notes that once upon a time, we're living, relieving ourselves, relieving, that's a Freudian slip, right? Relieving ourselves of guilt and sin was much simpler and more immediate than today. In ancient Israel, religion not only defined what was right and wrong, but it also gave people something to do when they felt burdened by doing wrong, sins of commission or by not doing right, sins of omission. So we know that from chapters four and five of Leviticus, they describe how when someone felt he had not lived up to God's expectation, he could bring a sacrifice, a chatat, a sin offering, or an asham, a guilt offering, to the altar. The purpose of the sacrifice was to remind the individual of his better nature, to say to himself, I would like to be perfect, but I know I'm not. Only God is perfect. Sometimes I am weak and thoughtless and I have many regrets, she writes. But look here, sometimes I can be strong and generous and disciplined. I am not a bad person. More often than not, I do the right thing. And here is proof of that. Please accept this offering, release me from this guilt, and grant me forgiveness. This is her take on, uh, on Harold Kushner's How Good Do We Have to Be? I don't know if you've read that book, but it is worth reading. She goes on to say, I admit, I envy the ancient Israelite who had the physical mechanism to relieve him or herself of guilt. We have a much harder road to walk today. No longer does a Kohen, does a, a priest guide us from weakness to strength like a personal trainer of the spirit. Our sages provide guidelines for how we might find our way to teshuva, to repentance. Not with fire and stone, flesh and blood, but with introspection, reflection, apology, and the ability to change. But let's just take one step back for, for half a minute. At times, we may indeed know why we have regrets or why we feel guilty. Well, at other times, that gray and leaden feeling confounds us. To say that guilt is complicated is an understatement. According to Charles Darwin, emotions, like other characteristics, evolved to help us to respond to our environments. For some emotions, the link between a cause, the emotional response, and the outcome is clear. Fear, for example, is a response to threat that enables us to at least flight or flee. There are other options. For other emotions, it's more difficult to trace these links. And then what is the function of sadness, for example, or shame? But guilt has perhaps the worst reputation of all, being described as a useless emotion by people ranging from musicians to therapists. This sometimes useless emotion, however, can inform and even motivate us when there is something we should or should not have done. But even the words should or should have, or should not have, in and of themselves are complicated. If, for instance, the phone rings during tonight's service, the owner might feel embarrassed because they should have silenced it. But should that person feel guilty? If I'm halfway home and realize that I wasn't charged for the case of water that was under my cart, how I feel depends on what I choose to do. Should I go back? and pay, or should I chalk it up to a mistake? 
Growing up, my mother said she wasn't a big fan of the triplets, should have, would have, and could have, teaching my brothers and me to strive to live a life of doing the right thing, the upright thing, thereby not having too many regrets. We were not expected to be perfect. We were expected to try to do the right thing. And as I've gotten older, as I've become more religious, and certainly as I have become a mother, that system for defining and determining what constitutes doing the right thing has become ever more important. Over these last several months, as the world continues to spin off its axis, as tempers rise, as horrors once unimaginable are now an everyday part of our news cycle, I, I suspect, like many of you, am desperate for a way to make sense of things and to do the right thing. These last several weeks, we have been reading from the book of Leviticus. We are confronted with long passages detailing how we should live and how we should organize ourselves as a community with agreed upon rules and norms and mores. Laid out for us within these chapters, we, found the found, we find the foundation for our system of mitzvot variously translated as good deed, sanctum, or commandment, and the belief that mitzvah will be key to Jewish continuity, the basis for our spiritual renewal. But many of us who find a home in the reform movement have a complex relationship with the mitzvot, with the commandments, wondering, questioning, doubting, exploring questions such as, what exactly are the mitzvot? Are they things that can change with time and place? If mitzvot are not the literal meaning of God's will, then what is the source of the authority and power of mitzvot? Why should modern Jews take them seriously? And last, can we create new mitzvot? Do I really think or believe that lighting candles or not wearing linen and wool in the same garment or not mixing milk and meat in the same dish will bring about world peace? I do not know. And what do I think or believe about what Rabbi Sidney Schwartz wrote about living a life of social responsibility when he says, if the Exodus created an ethic, tribal consciousness among Jews, it was Sinai that invested in them an understanding of their mission in the world. Jewish existence was to be based on bringing tzedek and mishpat, righteousness and justice to all God's children. The covenant forged at Sinai committed the Jewish people to a life of ethics and values. It was the spiritual moral genesis of the, of the Jewish people and it was powerfully connected to the Jewish people's understanding of God wants, of what God wants of them. The Torah teachings, the Torah's teachings about acting with chesed, with compassion, protecting the stranger in one's midst, ahavat ger, and pursuing peace, shalom, and truth, emet, shaped the Jewish notion of how one should live in this world. Sinai consciousness is at the root of Jewish understanding that to live true to the covenant of God established with the Jewish people at Sinai is to live a life of social responsibility. So asking, and then asking again what God wants of me, and then following through, is how I understand living a life of mitzvot. Do I always get it right? Absolutely not. But knowing that I am meant to live a life guided by a sacred commitment to act with compassion, with chesed, to protect the stranger in one's midst, ahavat ger, to pursue peace, to pursue shalom and wholeness and truth, emet, is a life of potential, shaped by our history, upheld in myriad ways over the centuries, giving me and our people purpose, and value, and holiness, and hope that this very, very broken world might come to know some repair. The merits of being commanded and the seeming paradox of choice is what many of us who are progressive Jews wrestle with daily. 
And perhaps it is this very struggle that is the essence of mitzvot. So when we say, when we sing, as we will later this evening, lo alecha ham lecha lidmor, velo ata ben chorim lahi batel mimena, it is not our job to complete the task, but neither are we free to desist from it. I believe, I hope, that we are choosing to live a life of mitzvot. So I hope we will have a chance to talk more about what it means to be a progressive, what it means to be a, a reformed Jew, what it means to be a person living in this time and in this place, and what and how we understand or don't understand or don't want to understand the sense of commandedness in our lives, what that looks like for each of us. And I hope that you'll join us at the end of services in the social hall and continue the conversation. We will continue as we conclude with the Alenu on page 586, as we invite you once again, please, to rise. Page 586. <clears throat> Page 598, as we pause to think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. During this period of Shloshim, these last 30 days, we are mourning the lives that have been lost in the war against Hamas, innocent civilian Israelis and Palestinians. And this Shabbat marks a yard site, an anniversary of passing for Edwin Alpert, Charles Ash, Betty Benjamin, Evelyn Berlowitz, Nathan Biren, Lillian Blank Fine, Helen Kramer, Rovi Faber, Howard Feinstein, Shirley Feinstein, Morris Feldman, Helen Feldsot, Mike Fields, Arthur Fink, Gertrude Fishman, Sylvia Sue Friedlander, Alexander Harder, Anna Hiller, Evelyn Jaffe, Henry Katz, Rivka Cannell, Samuel Clow, Jacqueline Levine, June McDonald, Erwin Metzger, Lawrence Robert Moser, Evelyn Pollan, Barbara Phillips, Anthony Price, Lloyd Rellin, Jewel Scheller, Emmanuel Schwartz, Barbara Shavik, Max Siegel, Marion Siegel, Ernest Smetna, Benjamin Steinberg, Charles Elliot Steinberg, Rose Tab, Kenneth Weaver, Joseph Wine, Freda Wilson, Joseph Wojciechowski, and Jack Yellen. If there are other names that you would add to either list, or names again that are better spoken aloud by you, please would you share that or those names with us? Hmm. And from home. He says, Ichronam Livracha, may each of their memories be for a blessing as we join together in saying, Yid Kadal, Yid Kadash, Shme Raba, Beelma, Divra, Hirte, Biamlich, Malkute, Bechaye Hon, Uvyome Hon, Uvchaye, the whole Beit Israel, Baagala, Uvisman, Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehesh me rabba me barach le olam o me o maya. Yit barach vi ishtabach vi it baar vi itramam vi it nase. Vi it hadar vi it ale vi it alal shmei de kudusha brihu. 
לאלה מכל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ודהמתה, דאמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרמה, הוא יעשה שלום. עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ועל כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all who mourn, to all who are remembering, and to all Israel as we join together in saying, Amen. 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 And kindly be seated. We want to share just some brief announcements with you this evening. We want to remind you that there is Torah study tomorrow morning. And as I said last week at, uh, at 9.15, we're almost on target with the weekly Parsha, which is unusual for the Torah study group. So join us if you want to uh, help shepherd us through Leviticus and do some good uh, fiery learning tomorrow morning at 9.15. And then we have services at 10.30 uh, here. Our office is closed on Monday morning in observance of Memorial Day. And then we have uh, services again next Friday night at 6 p.m., uh, Torah study at 9.15, and then Shabbat morning services at 10.30 when Asa Feldman will be called to the Torah as a bar mitzvah. We want to thank Laura Checo for being our board greeter this evening, and please be sure to thank Gary, our security uh, guard, this evening on your way out as well. And also we want to remind you, as so many of our hearts are turned to the east, that the Rochester chapter of Bring Them Home Family Walk will be happening on Sunday, June 2nd at 10.45. Bring Them Home Rochester will take part, uh, uh, um, take part in an international collaboration led by the Hope for Israel Alliance International. There is a synchronization of events worldwide and we want to ensure that host the hostages who still remain in captivity are, are, are not only thought of, but that we are doing whatever we can to raise our voices to bring them home and to combat anti-Semitism as it continues to climb. So that is Sunday, June 2nd at 1045. And then on a much lighter note, we have the seventh annual golf tournament to benefit Temple Sinai, Temple Beth David, Temple Beth Kodesh, and Temple Sinai. That's Monday, July 29th at 8.30 a.m. at Wildwood Country Club in Rush. And you can, uh, you can visit our Temple website to uh, sign up. And you need not be an expert golfer, is what I'm told, to, uh, to sign up. And then, uh, please, for those who know Laszlo, our other uh, very long-standing security guard, many of you know that his son is struggling mightily. He's in desperate need of a kidney transplant and to offset the tremendous costs of his treatment. There is a GoFundMe page that has been set up. You can call the office or look on our Facebook page if you are able and inclined to donate. Uh, and any other announcements that we should know about from where you sit? Any celebrations, any news, anything happening in the community that we should know about? Well, this is indeed Memorial Day, and it is fitting for us to offer this prayer, to share this prayer, not in your prayer book, uh, in honor of this uh, most important time and this season. Our God, God of our ancestors, we thank you for the numerous blessings you have bestowed upon our nation. Out of the many nations of the world, our country has been blessed with a singular opportunity to demonstrate how peoples of many faiths and heritages can live side by side and enrich one another's lives through friendship and the sharing of our unique traditions. We are united this day in a solemn act of gratitude to those who have served in our nation's defense, to those who have risked their personal safety to save the lives of others, and above all, to those who have died serving this country. Their sacrifices are forever remembered by us and by our children for generations to come. We do not forget. Our hearts go out to those serving today in our armed forces and to their families. Those who are veterans of previous wars know best of all what they must be feeling, what their spouses and children are feeling, and what they pray for. In all of our many faiths, we are united in this. Our prayers are with those who serve our country today. We ask God that they may return speedily and in good health and safety to their loved ones, and may God grant each of us the wisdom to uphold the very best of this nation's virtues that it may continue to serve as a beacon of liberty and harmony between peoples 
between peoples for all the world to say to see as we join together in saying amen amen, amen. as we remember as we are commanded as we wonder as we pray as we give thanks we give thanks for that which nourishes and sustains us with the mercy Please join me. Baruch Adonai Eleinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechagim HaOretz Amen. 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 Page 645 is where you will sing, where you will find the words to the song Lo Alecha, the, uh, the closing words uh, of, of the passage that I shared with you. It is not incumbent upon us to complete the task, but neither are we free to desist from it. Page 645. <laughs> wish you a Shabbat Shalom, good health and good spirits. We look forward for those who are here to joining you in the social hall and for you at home. We hope that you have a beautiful and a sweet Shabbat as well. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.